On a day early in July, about 20,000 miles above the sunlit side of the Earth, our home planet would look something like this, a sphere in space, apparently motionless. But we know the Earth is really moving. One sign of this is the movement of the sun across the sky. On Earth, in New York, the sun rose an hour ago on a cool July morning. It is still low in the sky. 3,500 miles to the east, in London, it is nearly noon. Farther east, in a village in India, at the same moment, the sun has begun to sink toward the west. In Japan, the sun is setting. The sun rises and sets over all parts of the world because of one of the Earth's movements. Because of another movement, too slow for us to see, the seasons change. On this July day, in the northern hemisphere, there is a pond that is a favorite swimming spot. But it's a skating pond six months later in January. Many seasonal and other changes take place on Earth because of the Earth's movements. You're going to learn about four of these movements. If we could speed up one of them several thousand times, you'd see the movement we call rotation, the turning of the Earth on its axis. A marker on the Earth changes positions as we watch. It turns toward us and away from us, and then finally will disappear from view. In the same way, all parts of the Earth turn past the Sun. Eventually, the marker will appear again from the opposite direction. The Earth makes one complete rotation in approximately 24 hours. What happens when the Earth's rotation turns the marker away from the Sun? By looking down at the rotating Earth from over the North Pole, we can see. The marker moves from sunlight into shadow, from day into night. All parts of the world go through periods of light and darkness because of the Earth's rotation. Of course, to people on Earth, it's the sun that seems to be in motion. It rises, reaches its highest point in the sky, sets, then rises again. So at the same moment, to people in different parts of the world, it is a different time of day. So, for instance, at the center of the lighted half, the sun appears at its highest point. Elsewhere, here, for instance, the sun is rising. It is dawn here, while at this same moment, halfway around the world, here, the sun is setting. The day is ending. So you can see why, at different points around the world, it is a different time of day. As the Earth rotates, the time of day continually changes for all parts of the world. Those differences in time weren't important long ago when transportation and communication were primitive. Then, people traveled only short distances in a day. Today, rapid worldwide transportation and nearly instant communication have made us more aware of time differences in the different parts of the world. Today, we can tell what time it is in any part of the world because the nations of the world have adopted a uniform system of time zones. Time zones of the Earth are based on the fact that every part of the world turns through a full circle of 360 degrees every 24 hours. This means that in one hour, the Earth rotates through one twenty-fourth of a circle, 15 degrees. Based on this, the Earth has been divided into 24 time zones, each 15 degrees wide. Each of these dark and light bands represents a time zone. In general, time in one zone is exactly one hour later than in the next zone to the west, and exactly one hour earlier than in the next zone to the east. The United States extends across seven time zones, from eastern Maine to Hawaii and the western tip of Alaska. Remember, we've imagined the Earth's rotation has sped up several thousand times. To see a second movement of the Earth, we have to imagine that its speed is increased even more, 
and move further away in space. Now, with the sun in the distance, we see the movement called the Earth's revolution. The Earth revolves around the sun, traveling through space in a nearly circular orbit. Now, six months later, we look past the sun and see the Earth in the distance, continuing its revolution around the sun. In 12 months, or more exactly, 365 and one-fourth days after we first began watching, the Earth will have made one complete revolution around the sun. The time it takes the Earth to make one revolution of the sun is the period of time we call a year. The Earth makes one revolution every year. The Earth's revolution is part of the reason we have seasons. To see why, let's think about the imaginary line around which the Earth rotates, the Earth's axis. It is not straight up and down, perpendicular to the plane of the Earth's orbit. The axis is tilted at an angle. If we projected the Earth's axis out into space, it would point toward Polaris, the North Star, at an angle of 23 and a half degrees from the perpendicular. Because of this angle, the Earth, as it revolves around the Sun, does not receive the Sun's rays uniformly throughout the year. Beginning about June 21st, the Northern Hemisphere has warmer weather and longer days because it is tipped toward the sun. As the Earth rotates, the northern hemisphere is within the sun's light a longer part of each 24-hour period. It is summer in the north. Now, as the Earth revolves around the sun, the tilt or inclination of its axis remains the same. So when the Earth has revolved to the opposite side of its orbit, conditions are reversed. Now, around December 21st, the Northern Hemisphere is tilted away from the Sun. It is winter there, but the Southern Hemisphere is now tilted toward the Sun. Now, as the Earth rotates, the Southern Hemisphere is within the Sun's light a longer part of each 24-hour period. It is summer in the Southern Hemisphere and winter in the Northern Hemisphere. And so, two movements of the Earth, rotation and revolution, plus the tilt of the Earth's axis, combined to produce the seasons of the year. To see a third movement of the Earth, let's think of the rotating Earth as a spinning gyroscope. Notice the wobble of its axis. The Earth's axis wobbles too, because of the pull of gravity of the Sun and Moon on the Earth. One completion of this conical path of the axis takes about 26,000 years. One effect of this we won't see is that in about 12,000 years, the Earth's axis will point toward the star Vega, and our descendants will call it the Pole Star. This third movement is the precession of the equinoxes, the wobble or variation in the direction of the Earth's axis. The three movements we've seen involve just the Earth as it moves through its orbit around the Sun. A fourth movement takes place in a much vaster dimension. To understand it, we must remember that our Sun is only one of billions of stars that form a great spiral system, a galaxy. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, looks something like this. The Sun's position in the galaxy is about here. The galaxy rotates like an enormous wheel and our solar system moves with it, making one revolution every 200 million years. This galactic movement is a fourth movement of the Earth. Rotation, revolution, precession of the equinoxes, and galactic movement, four movements of the Earth. Today, one of the purposes of space exploration is to understand more fully and more accurately all the movements of the Earth.